Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my brand new money making guide for Black Desert Online. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can make money in BDO through grinding, life skills, AFK methods, and passive incomes. At the end, I'm going to go over some advanced methods as well. This video is designed to go over each of these methods at a high level. I wanted to help give you guys a sense of direction and show you what your options are. If you're looking for some more video money making guides, I got plenty more on my YouTube channel. Which leads me to my next point. Over 70% of you guys watching my videos are not subscribed. Please do like, comment, and subscribe if you find this video helpful. It really helps me out. And if you're ever unhappy with my content, feel free to unsub and let me know in the comment section down below what I can do better. And if you want to support me, the best way to do so is to share my video with your friends and on Discord. Also, I stream on Twitch.tv. TV slash I'm Pansy every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Regardless of what game I'm playing, I'm always down to talk about BDO, MMORPGs, or gaming in general, so feel free to drop by and hang out. This video is brought to you by BenQ. BenQ is a multinational company specializing in monitors, projectors, lighting fixtures, and many more excellent devices. For this video, they sent me something I thought I would never need. You see, I'm a gamer. I'll sit in the dark with my RGBs blaring and my monitor to illuminate my desk. But there are times I use a standing lamp in my room. The issue with lamps and backlights is that they can cause screen glare, take up space, and unevenly light surfaces. When lights falling on your setup from behind or the sides, it can result in shadows. Whether you're working at your desk or on your monitor, all of this can add to eye strain. I never thought much about this until I got the BenQ screen bar LED monitor light. The screen bar is smooth, compact, and fits nearly any monitor. It blends right into my gaming setup, and the screen bar comes with four feather touch buttons on the top, and the intensity of the light and the color fades in in a fluid manner. The screen bar is extremely easy to set up, and the parts feel very high quality and have a good weight to them. This is definitely a premium product. I never thought I needed a lamp like this, but now that I have it, I use it every day. It's definitely a keeper, and check out the links down below in the description if you're interested. Also, here's a quick before and after of my setup. Grinding in BDO is one of the most basic ways to make money, and it's a great way to get introduced to the mechanics of the game. It might not be the best way to make silver at every stage of the game, but it definitely has potential at the end game. If you're a beginner looking to get into grinding, there's a few things you want to remember. In this game, there's something called Loot Scrolls and Agris Fever. The Agris Fever is unlocked by doing the Book of Margrahan, and it definitely helps increase your money per day. And loot scrolls are an absolute staple when grinding. Whenever you hear someone's approximate trash loot or how much silver they make per hour, that is using a blue loot scroll. That is the basis. Now you might be thinking, how do we get all of these loot scrolls? Isn't that expensive? Cash up, etc. Well, the game does give you plenty of loot scrolls for free through login rewards, events, etc. If you ask a life skiller who doesn't use any loot scroll, it's very likely they'll have hundreds of those just sitting around in their inventory. Me personally, even with grinding every day I still have over two to three hundred loose scrolls which I just can't burn through I get more than I use in a set period of time so don't worry about it as you play the game you'll accumulate a lot more and if you want to burn loot scrolls faster you can combine them to make a gold loot scroll which increases the amount of trash loot you get if you're a beginner player and you want to get into grinding, I definitely recommend you start off by doing the main story questline to get a little bit of starting gear. Doing the main story questline gets you Naru and Narchilian gear. After you complete the quest Idana's Descendant, you get the option to rent Nezer gear for CP. Also at level 56, if you play on the PC, you can buy Oasis gear from the Oasis vendor, whichever you want to do. All right, let's kick things off. The first spot I want to point out is Helm. So you can start grinding here at as low as 80 AP. I know it's recommended 90 to 110, but I was able to start at 80 and I ended up at 120 that night. So you can expect to make around 20 to 40 mil an hour, depending on if you're just killing the mobs, how efficiently you kill them, or if you're doing the elite rotation, which I recommend. It's definitely the most viable method at this AP range to make some good money. And it's not too hard to pick up. I never used any loot scrolls here and I don't recommend you do either. It's a bit of a waste of a loot scroll to use it at this low of a level, but it's good money nonetheless. Next up, 
up is Polly's Forest. Over here, the recommended AP is 160 on screen, but I would personally wait until 175 and 250 DP, so you're really comfortable. You can start sooner or later. The money per hour greatly varies on a few factors like your class, your efficiency, and the type of pets you have. Personally, I'd say with a blue loot scroll, you can get anywhere from 50 to 90 mil an hour at the upper limit. Next up is Blood Wolf Settlement. I definitely recommend you have 190 to 200 AP Kudum before starting here. This is a spot which drops a pot piece, so it can be contested by higher geared players, so be aware. With a blue loot scroll, I believe at the upper limit, you can expect anywhere from 100 to 110 mil an hour once you're efficient. Next up is Pilaku Jail. This is a spot known for dropping a lot of Pila Face scrolls as well as Black Spirit Claws. If you ever need one, this is a place to be. You can expect 90 to 110 mil an hour with a blue loot scroll. I definitely recommend you do the Pila Face scrolls yourself and sell the memory fragments for cash. That'll net you a little bit more. Next up is Forest Ronneros. I kind of disagree with what you see on screen here. I think you can start grinding here at 230 to 240 AP with the right PVE buffs, and you can expect to make 100 to 110 mil an hour here as well with the blue loot scroll. Next up is Monsham Forest. With 230 to 240 AP Kudum, you can be grinding here with a blue loot scroll for about 100 to 110 mil an hour. Now we start getting to the end game grind spot, so I'm gonna start going a bit quicker here. Next is Akman and Histria. Both of these are capable of granting anywhere from 100 to 150 mil an hour, depending on your efficiency, your class, etc. These are located throughout the desert with the portals. Then we have Kratuga. I started grinding here at 235 AP as a mystic, but that was me trying to flex. To be the most efficient, you wanna be around 261 Kudum, but you can definitely go a lot sooner. I'd say around 100 to 150 mil an hour is a good average for that at 269 kudum that's when stars end becomes pretty efficient you can expect a solid 150 mil an hour on average once you get really efficient and at 273 plus ap with the temple rotation main cliff rotations you can start pushing towards 200 mil an hour now that elvia servers are out i really don't need to shout out sakraya but lower sakraya can net you anywhere from 150 to 200 mil an hour as well it's more consistent than stars end but i recommend 269 ap at least and a DP of 329 to tank those mobs. I won't be talking about Odalita spots because they're a bit irrelevant now Now that we have Elvia servers on PC, but they do still net some decent cash over there. You can grind there if you're looking for particular items like going for the Fallen God armor or the Law or Zekka costume. Anyway, at 250 AP, you can grind at Baragi Den and Ultra Rims if you're doing two man. Baragi Den can net you around 100 to 150 mil an hour. Um, you can expect a little bit more at Ultra Rims. I don't have the exact numbers, but I'd say around 20% more. It's actually a really good spot. A lot of end game players have been telling me they've been grinding there. Even with really high gear scores, they're making around 300 to 400 mil an hour, which is more than some of the other spots here. So definitely check that out. All right, guys, I hope you found the grinding section of this video helpful. We're going to close it out with these last few rotations. 273 AP is a good place to be at when you start grinding Swamp Nagas and Swamp Vogans. These can net you around 200 mil an hour. At 282 AP, that's when I started grinding Bloody Monastery and Orc Camp. Bloody Monastery is 250 mil plus an hour. Very RNG dependent. It's gone all the way up to 400 mil an hour, sometimes with really good RNG. Same with Orc Camp. Orc Camp is usually 250 to 300 mil an hour consistently. With good RNG, it's gone all the way past 400 mil. Anyway, that's it for this section. Let's move on to the next one. Now, as of recently, because we had two classes which were released in quick succession, the memory fragment prices have went haywire. So it used to be almost the same price as the Pila Face Scrolls or actually a little bit higher. And when those conditions are met, that's when you make the most amount of money from doing Pila Face Scrolls. Like when the price of Pila Face Scrolls and memory fragments were the same, I was making 100 to 130 mil an hour. So it's actually pretty good cash for someone who's only 175 AP. So this is definitely still viable. Just keep an eye on the marketplace. Depending on your region, it becomes more or less profitable. So just keep an eye on it. If it ever does reach those really profitable levels again, you can just do it for a while and just keep an eye on the fluctuations because it can go down within a day. So in this video, I'm not going into depth about the scrolls for profit. In my first money making guide, I did. So you can check that out if you want more details on how to do this. In this video, I wanted to shout out Valia in for their scroll 
Girls Profit Calculator, it's really useful to find out if it's worth doing for you. So this is how it works. You go to valiain.com, go to Scrolls Profit on top and select your region over here. I'm in PC North America. And then you come down to the Scrolls for Profit Calculator here. You have to input how long it takes you to complete a full summon. So you combine five of these, you summon the mob, and how long it takes you to kill all the mobs and get the loot. For me, Peel of Face Scrolls used to take about 75 seconds back when I was like 175 AP. So this is a pretty good estimate for me to follow. Over here for the numbers down here, this is how many of each scroll you'd need if you wanted to do a one hour session. So if I was doing Peel of Face Scrolls, I need 240. The setting over here is to see whether you're keeping all the materials that drop or you're selling it or you're selling it with a value pack. Now down below, it changes uh, what your profit is per hour. And depending on this, you can decide whether it's worth doing or not. Active life skilling is some of the best money making in the game, especially gathering. To get you introduced to the concept of gathering, I'm going to start off at sheep, but just know there are plenty of much better gathering spots in the game. Haha, uh -huh, before anyone says it in the comment, beat you to it. All right, to start out gathering, I'm going to use the shy for the base gathering level. We're already at professional one because I get free gathering. For the accessories, you would want to have Logia accessories here because they give life skill XP. That's good. And since I don't have any mastery gear, I'm going to be using a magic tool for this test. Also, I will be using my hedgehog. It is tier four. It is a bit pay to win. But if you're ever going to get into gathering for money making, you definitely want to have this pet. It's just a part of the game, guys. Nothing we can do. For food, we'll use the seafood cron meal, gives us gathering and life skill XP, and we'll be using the life spirit stone. So with these combined, along with all the other buffs I have, I will be at five gathering. And that's really important for starting off. So I'm using a shy because she has a skill called gather around. It's on a 15 second cooldown and it pulls in all the mobs. So it makes it really easy for me to gather just like this, guys. So all I do is now I just stand here and spam R and we are good to go. That's why sheeps are the easiest place to gather. Now obviously the meat itself isn't as worth as much as like wolves and such. But if you're getting into gathering for the first time, by all means you can start off here. For this test, I'm going to do 200 energy worth of gathering. Generally that's about how much a beginner player who's just got into the game, did the main story quest line, explored a bit, and is now looking into making money, that's a, about how much energy they usually have if not it's really easy to get that energy guys so go out and grind it anyway i'm using a comma soul blessing so my energy will passively regen but the comma soul blessing isn't too bad it only gives you two energy and it's not going to make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things i could use the turing gates for the extra life skill xp from my tent but that also gives energy recovery so i figure why make it worse Anyway, I'm going to show you guys how much money I make in 200 energy using a magic tool and professional one gathering. All right, we are just about done with the 200 energy. Now, like I said, I wasn't counting the energy region. Majority of the player base does play with Commissal Blessing. It's just a natural part of the game, unfortunately. So is what it is. And that's it. 200 energy done. So let's take a look at how much we got. So this is a pretty good haul. I got a bit lucky with the RNG because you saw I got all these hard sharps, Kafras and stuff. But I'll break down the pricing of each of these items and the total so you can see how much I got in total and where it all all came from all right guys this is the count from 20 minutes of gathering using 200 energy and i made 37.8 mil this is before market tax of course now just remember i got pretty rng carried here so on average i think 20 mil in 200 energy is definitely reasonable to expect and also for the items you've gathered for example the meat you could turn it into red sauce through cooking and sell it for more money so that's something you have to look into because that really helps out the income from gathering even with the hards and sharps you got to see how much the concentrated stones are selling for how much the concentrated magical black gems are selling for and depending on which is netting the most profit you can turn those into that and make more money out of it so just do a little bit of research and this is a good baseline because i used a shy i didn't level up any gathering prior so it started off at professional one also i didn't use any mastery gear so this is a pretty good estimate i know i had a hedgehog and i had commissal blessing but you know most players do if you do get into gathering you know just use your best gear use your best buffs and stuff and just go give it a try all right guys now that we saw how much money you can make at sheep's 
let's look at some of the other spots which are much better. First up is going to be Wolves, which is right between Western Guard Camp and Valia, pretty easy to get to as well. And the meat is worth a little bit more than at Sheep. After that, I want to point out the Pilgrim's Haven, which is an excellent combination between money per hour and EXP per hour, which can net you a lot of cash, but also supply you with rough stones, which you can use to make cooking utensils and your workshops. We'll talk a little bit more in depth about that later. After that, let's go to Bear. South of Bear, you'll have a lot of deer. This is a really good spot to gather deer blood with fluid collecting and that can hit you a lot of raw silver. Next to Trent and Ash Forest, there's a lot of trees. You can go lumbering here. Lumbering was one of my favorite things to do gathering because you got a lot of Kafir stone and ancient spirit dust. So your money per hour was pretty decent as well as it supplied you with lumber. So with the logs you get from lumbering, you can supply your cooking utensils as well along with the rough stone. Now that we talked about the different gathering locations, you can use this sheet to calculate how much money you could be making. This is Byrog's gathering calculator. If you want to download it, go to my Discord channel and under BDO Sheets, you can find the link there. It's easier for me to update my links in one spot rather than every video I post them on. So go check it out over there. So to use this, come over here and do your settings over on the top right under region, then come down to estimate overview. Over here, you want to put your goal mastery or you can fill out your current mastery here and you can see the difference with changes in your settings. So for example, with 1450 mastery, you could be making 139 mil per hour if you're using pots on cooldown if you're not using pots and you just wanted to dump your energy if you had 400 energy you could make 182 mil so this is a pretty accurate calculator it might not be exact but it gives you a really good idea of the approximate money you can be making and on the right side over here it also gives you time estimates and Byrog has his gathering rotations on the right over here as well which are really useful so just remember that this is raw calculation. For example, you are gathering meat and you were to sell the meat directly. If you were to use that meat for cooking and stuff, you could make more money in the long run, but this is a direct calculation just to show you which spots are lucrative if you want raw cash and how much you could be expecting at each spot. Bartering is nowhere as near as hyped as it used to be when it first came out, but it's still pretty good. Once you get through the initial learning curve and you make your caravel or gallius, you start making pretty decent money. In terms of money per hour, bartering is calculated by money per day because the money per hour is a bit less than other methods, but it's a lot less effort. It's a lot of just auto pathing and just steering your ship, which requires very little input on your keyboard. So in terms of money per day, with a caravel and gallius, you can definitely make 300 to 500 mil a day with a decent barter count and dedication. And once you get a crack, your barter runs suddenly become a lot quicker and you can make anywhere from 600 to 800 mil a day, depending on what the prices are on the marketplace with your pro coin conversion and what kind of routes you're doing. If you guys want to learn how to barter, be sure to check out my bartering guide. It's still very much valid and it's pretty in-depth. It'll teach you from the very basics to making your caravel. If I started talking about how to barter in this video, it'd suddenly be an hour longer. The only thing that has changed since I released that guide is the barter refresh mechanic. Now it's out of a 150 point system with a value pack and we're only able to do three barter refreshes and one ship material refresh per day. Ship material refresh is basically an entire bartering list of only ship material exchanges or you can do two ship material refreshes and two barter refreshes but overall i think it's a positive change it allows you to make your caravel gallius or Karax a lot easier you don't have to search for all those small ship material exchanges it was a lot tougher back then but now it's a lot more streamlined and easier it did reduce our total profit per day a little bit but I think in the overall grand scheme of things, it was a lot better to help players get into bartering. Anyway, recently on stream, I did talk about is it worth bartering in 2021? And the TLDR is basically what you want out of the game, how you want to play it. Do you want to play it actively and go full efficient and make the most you can? then you probably want to do some active money making methods like grinding or life skilling. But if you want to play the chill life and use a lot less inputs per hour, just, you know, chilling at your PC and watching anime on the side, 
that is a really good way to make money. So it's still valid. It still makes good money. There are much better ways to make cash, I know. But hey, if you can make consistent cash over a long period of time versus inconsistent cash where you get burnt out and quit, you'll pull ahead. Anyway, take what you will out of it. If you want to check it out, be sure once again, check out the bartering guide. It will take you from point A to point B pretty easily. And if you have any other questions, you can go to the sailing discord where you can ask all the questions you want, find a lot of useful resources, as well as find sailing groups for the dailies. These are really useful because doing those sailies on your own is really tough with a caravel or a gallias, and it takes twice as long. If you get into a sailing group on that Discord, then it'll take you a lot less time, and all you have to do is leech. So basically, you're just sitting on the boat with everyone else, and it gets done in like 45 minutes to an hour tops. AFK money making in BDO is not very lucrative, but there are ways you can utilize it to increase your income in the grand scheme of things. In this section of the video, I'm going to give you tips on AFK fishing, processing, cooking, alchemy, and training. AFK fishing is probably the easiest life skill to maintain. All you do is log into that character, start fishing, and then every once in a while you have to store your relic shards, turn in your fish, or repair your rod, which can be very quick. So because of the ease of use, that's why I have an AFK fishing character. I like putting her in towns where I'm rolling for workers. And then every time I check the computer, I come back to the worker supervisor and just try my luck. There are ways you can do this. Me personally, I go for ease of use versus amount of money I'm receiving, but you can like AFK in Tooth Fairy Cabin or in one of these random islands and then use an archeologist map to go turn in your fish and then warp right back. There are different ways you can do it and each comes with its own income, but also has its own setup. So getting the archeologist map can be an effort of almost like 40 to 80 hours depending on your luck etc could be even worse so depending on how you want to go about it you can decide where to afk fish when you're afk fishing there's a few things you want to remember for the rod i like using a plus 10 balanos rod for the minus 25 percent auto fishing time clothes you can use any clothes mastery or you can use exp clothes like the professional fisher's uniform or silver embroidered clothes i'm just being cheap here you can also wear any life skill accessories for more exp or consumable i like using the chilled coconut cocktail or any Anything that reduces auto fishing time and you can use seafood crown mail for more exp as well for the pet i make sure to have one auto fishing pet at all times they don't stack if you have multiples of them so just one is enough and if you want to get more exp there are ways to stack all of those buffs i don't really do that i really don't care at all about my fishing level it's just there but if you want to min max you can definitely look to maximize your life skill buffs that does help in the long run but yeah that's about it once you have artisan one you can block out all the trash fish and get just the yellow and the orange fishes which uh, makes inventory management a lot easier it'll be a bit tough in the beginning because you won't be able to fish for an entire night without your inventory filling up but it's pretty easy to get to artisan one just uh, stick with it and pretty soon you'll have yourself an auto fisher afk fishers are one of the simplest things but realistically if you're uh, blocking out everything um, blue and lower you can probably expect maybe 10 to 20 mil a night depending on your luck and your fishing level if you fish all day sure you make more money if you are out in the sea and you're fishing with a really big inventory and collecting everything blue and higher and you teleport using an archaeologist map yeah you can make a pretty decent chunk of change but this is just for the ease of actually just setting it up and letting it go so whenever i need to afk i immediately just do this i used to do afk cooking a lot but then i got too lazy to set it up and there are many nights that i didn't set it up and it was just a loss so always good to have an AFK fisher. Next up is AFK processing. AFK processing is best used in tangent with cooking or alchemy, mostly cooking, but there are some other uses to it. I'm not gonna talk about anything related to trading because I've never done it before, but you can make a little bit of profit from processing. So if you want to make some cash overnight through AFK processing, you have to find yourself the right item. To do so, go to the central marketplace and I'm going to show you a few examples. The important thing is the logic behind these examples, but not the items themselves because prices will always fluctuate. So first I'm going to show you Tef. So what you can see here is that people are getting Tef from their worker empires and if they're not using it, they're just putting it on the marketplace. When you look here, there's a lot of competition here. So to sell your Tef, you're gonna keep undercutting and eventually it's just not that much money. If you look at Tef flour, 
there's a lot less competition here. And because it's used directly for other stuff and it's easier to use teff flour for making teff flour dough instead of just regular teff, people will opt to buy this instead. So anyway, because there's a demand over here, and a high supply over here, it's a really good option to go for this kind of item. Now, Tef isn't the best example. Here's a better one, Iron Ore. So when I look at Iron Ore here, you have a quantity of the base item on the marketplace. And then the higher variant is in great demand. There's literally none of them over here. So if you go here and put it at max price, it's definitely gonna sell out. So if you find items like this, you can capitalize on it by processing. Now you have to keep changing your item because if too many people are doing the same item, then the demand's gonna decrease. So you have to keep looking for the opportunities and just buy them off the marketplace and just process overnight and put them back up. But remember, you want to have a good mastery level and a high processing level to profit. The higher your processing level, the more items you can proc and the frequency they proc also increases. So if you're looking to process overnight, it's definitely useful to get your processing success rate as high as possible. So to do that, you can use these silver embroidered craftsman's clothes. These give you processing XP as well as processing success rate. Alchemy stone, like the life spirit stone, any food buff, like the seafood cron meal any elixir or draft if you want to use it like the verdure draft but i usually don't use these overnight because i can only hit them once and of course i know i know the pay to win costume that's there so it's a part of the game guys so if you can get one it really does help out so come over here to the pearl shelf on the costume section and you can find it here what this does is if you go to your storage it'll have another button over here called processing you click that and for example we can make uh some flowers so we just select the items you want to process from your storage and the product will go straight to your inventory. Now, once upon a time, this used to be something you'll do overnight, but now that we have mastery gear, it doesn't last that long. With the advent of mastery and processing stones, you're able to process items a lot quicker. By the time you wake up, your character is usually overweight and already stopped processing. So it's always useful to have these stones available. You don't have to go for a high plus or you don't have to go for really high mastery to achieve efficient AFK processing overnight. If you want to do afk processing throughout the day and to process as many items as possible then yes it definitely helps to have high mastery but if you're doing it overnight even just plus 12 logia tools are just more than enough i've always uh been perfectly fine with it but if you're min maxing and if you're wanting to do it throughout the day and stuff then definitely look to increase your mastery and that way you can get through a lot more processing in a set period of time now you guys are probably wondering how much money per hour i do not know i cannot give you a number on this because there's too many variables on what you're doing and how you're doing it if you're processing to do cooking it all adds into cooking and if you're processing for raw profit it depends on the item you choose so it really depends on you also it depends on your processing success rate your processing level and such but if it's something that ties into your other life skills, I definitely recommend doing it. And if you're doing nothing else and it's something you already have set up, definitely worth it. For cooking and alchemy, I won't go into depth on how to cook, but rather I'll tell you what you can do to make some AFK money off of it. So my first tip is going to be the residence you use. My favorite one is in Heidel on 6-4 second floor. The reason being is when I place these tools, they all already point this direction. So it's really easy to just drop them down. You have two floors and it's in a really good shape. So you can make some really clean setups in here. My second tip is for Shy. She starts off with professional one alchemy. So if you're looking to do alchemy, she's a good character to do so. When it comes to using alchemy for AFK profit, you basically want to process any items you're getting from gathering or by other means and to sell it for a higher value. I'm going to give you guys one example, which you can do for profit. Spirit perfume elixirs are really popular for grinding because they go really well with frenzy draft. So these are really useful to make with alchemy. Now with low level alchemy and low mastery, they're not really great profit, but it's still profit nonetheless to make them you need a few items so you need 10 loopy tree sap one fruit of nature two violet flower 10 powder of darkness and one dead tree essence everything here you can uh pre-order on the marketplace but for the loopy tree sap you can get that very easily with the node uh it gathers at a pretty good rate so personally i always have a worker working here it's over here at loopy tree forest and let's see how many i have i got almost 10,000 here i got a few thousand more in my inventory so i always have a pretty good supply for 
from there. For the rest of the items, I always keep a pre-order. And once I have enough of those, I just uh, go ahead and make them and sell the ones I don't need. Fruit of Nature and Dead Tree Essence are some of those items that you'd always want to have a pre-order on, especially Fruit of Nature. It's really high in demand. Uh, Violet Flower also fills in really slowly. You can go gather those pretty well. And Powder of Darkness it usually sits on the marketplace for my region anyways. Otherwise, you can put a pre-order for that as well. Once you have all the items, you can just go ahead and start putting them together with an alchemy tool and profit. Anyway, guys, to be honest with you, I really don't recommend getting into alchemy if you want a stable AFK income method. It's something that's honestly reserved for someone with a lot of gear and a high mastery. The market isn't the best for it, and there are many better ways to go about making money if you want to. So honestly, it's just something to keep in mind. The Spirit Perfume Elixir method does work. It does uh, net a little bit of cash but that too can fluctuate depending on your region and the supply and demand. Cooking is also one of those things that isn't going to be that profitable until the higher mastery levels. Early on, if you're going to do a little bit of AFK cooking, I recommend you focus on your Imperial cooking boxes. So cooking the meals which are used for the boxes is probably your best bet. Now, in order for Imperial cooking boxes to become viable, you'd have to get to Guru cooking. You can make some decent profit starting from professional. I was making on average about 30 mil a day, and it's really easy to make those meals. But in the long run, you definitely definitely want to get to Guru. To get to Guru cooking, here's a potential path for you. Cook vinegar all the way until professional one, then professional one to master one do pickled vegetables, master one and beyond, pick either balanos or valencia meals and start cooking all the sub recipes. Early game beginner players can't really hit the market for cooking, you have to focus on imperial cooking and leveling up, because you're competing with people with much higher mastery and as an early game, all you can really do is set up for imperials and wait until you're at the higher gear score to start cooking for actual profit. And when you're finally ready to start cooking, your focus is going to be on all the sub meals and your final meal that you decide. Alright guys, next up is training. Training does have a potential to make 40 to 50 mil a day through AFK training. There is a bit of a setup and method to this, but here we go. First thing I want to point out is the trainer's clothes. These are really good for training XP. You need to have skill 10 in order to wear this. But you can also use a tailoring coupon on this to make it into a costume. Otherwise, you can use the pay to win costume right here. So we have the Vinia Riding Attire. This gives you 20% mount XP and it's really good. So there are buffs like Celerity Draft and the Stone Tail Meal, which is for training, gives you decent XP buffs. But I don't recommend using those for this AFK method because it eats away at all your profit. And obviously wearing life skill accessories will give you more life skill XP and that's always a plus. And of course, having a Manos riding crop is really useful. Now I'm going to explain the actual method to catching the horses. So the best place to catch horses for AFK training is going to be Duvencroon because you get a lot of T5 and T4 horses here. You want to focus on the tier 5s because we're going to turn those tier 5 horses in for Imperial Seals after their level 15. So on the screen, I'm going to draw the locations of the known spawn points for these horses as well as show you guys where I prefer to catch them. All right, so the best spot is going to be right south of Duvencroon around here. So down in this area, as well as over here, you can find some horses. The next spot is going to be near Gaiac's altar, a little bit to the left of it. And then we can find more over here, right around here, I'd say. And then a little bit north of it, next to this little lake area, you can find a few more. So these are the spawn points that I found researching online, but otherwise, Juvencroon is probably your best bet. I like to do it over here, but it is a known spot, so expect other people to be there as well, especially when there's a training event going on. But anyway, get your four horses, put them in the stable over here, and attach them to your wagon. You can then auto path right here in Juvencroon pretty easily, and you want to level them all the way up to level 15. Once they're level 15, you can exchange them for Imperials. By doing Imperial Exchange, you get Silver and you get Imperial Seals. You get one seal per tier of the horse. So when you exchange four tier five horses at level 15, you make a decent bit of silver as well as get five seals per each horse. So you get 20 seals. You exchange 12 seals for a black magic crystal viper. And this can be done in Calfion at Breezeman or Valks. So to show you where they are, let's go here. So right over here is Valks. And every other day, you'll be able to exchange for two BMC Vipers. This is a really good exchange. You can use those to just sell on the marketplace. They're usually always sold out and in demand, or you can gamble them for bonds, wands, and gins. Right now, these are going down. It's just gone down recently. Otherwise, it's usually sold out, but that's okay. 
It's still solid money, even if you use them to make into ones and bonds and gins, it does average out to a pretty good profit. Anyway, that's the gist of making money through AFK training. Using that as a mainstay of your income is not really a good way to go about it, but using it as something AFK and on the side when you're not actually playing the game is actually pretty useful. Only downside is there's a little bit of setup of catching the horses, which is the reason why I don't do it. I get lazy and I stop even trying. So that's why I do AFK fishing. It's the easiest to set up and the most reliable for me. But if you can get into the habit of doing this, this will actually pay off pretty well. Anyway, guys, that's it for the AFK income section. Now, AFK income is definitely not the most lucrative way to play BDO. But when it's combined with passive income methods as well, it does become decent so that you still have progress going on even when you're not playing the game. Me, there's been many weeks when I don't feel like grinding or doing anything, so I just set it up for AFK and passive income methods, and I still make a pretty decent amount of silver. You know, every week and a half, I get about a billion silver out of it. So it does keep me going, and I don't feel bad that I'm falling behind. But in the next section, we're gonna talk about actual passive income methods, which you can use to make a little bit of silver. Now that we talked about AFK income in BDO, let's talk about passive income. The way AFK and passive income differs is that for AFK, you have to be doing that specific task. For example, AFK fishing, you have to be fishing. AFK processing, you gotta be processing. But passive income still is ticking and generating some sort of gain while you're doing something else. For example, when I'm doing farming, my crops are growing when I'm playing the game and doing something else, or even AFKing. For my Imperial turn ins, once I turn it in, I just have to wait until the timer ticks down and resets for the day and I turn in again. For my Worker Empire, the Worker Empire is always gathering. Uh, resources from the nodes and storing them in the storage as long as we keep them fed so we feed the workers and then just let it go whatever you do in bdo that's always ticking so the first passive income method i want to point out is farming of course you probably heard me talk about farming so many times in many previous videos be sure to check them out if you want a detailed explanation on how to get into farming overall i make about 100 mil a day from farming by doing five to six farm runs a day so the crop i use is magic hump mushrooms because i like the quick growth cycle even without giving water or fertilizer it's about three hour, 10 minutes or so. And it works out really great for my schedule because right before i start work i do a farm run at around 9 a.m. and then I do another farm run at lunchtime then another one at afternoon break at around 3 or 4 p.m. and then after work around 6 to 7 p.m. I'll do another farm run then at night after dinner or uh, sometime in the night I'll do another farm run and lastly before I go to sleep really late as fuck because I'm a gamer I'll do another farm run so because I work from home it really works out well for me each farm run takes about two minutes and every day I spend about 10 to 12 minutes doing the farm runs so while farming you also have a chance of getting the moles to spawn which if you kill them you get these spirit pouch of ferocious beasts which are also really good for the daily income and your primary income is from spamming breed on these crops and making stone tail fodder by combining 20 of each of these like two of these or any combination of them. You can also farm for actual products which you use for cooking like pepper, onions and such. Those are also really good. If you're someone who doesn't have even the two minutes to do the farm runs, you want something even quicker, you can use like magic hot peppers, which uh, have like a four and a half hour growth cycle, something around there. And they take up 10 slots at each fence. So every fence can only hold one of those. So you can drop those in and do that. And it cuts your farm run down in half. But anyway, this is my preference because it works with my schedule. Even if you can do only two to three farm runs a day, that's around almost uh, 50 mil. So whatever you can do, you should do it and work around your schedule and what's uh, comfortable for you. So like I said, check out my other videos if you want a more in-depth explanation on farming. Once you get that down, it takes about one day to get artisan one farming maybe two if you're not spending that much time but it's really easy to do and once you get your magic seeds from spamming breed on the special seeds you can set up a farm pretty quickly full of magic seeds and once you have that going you are set you start making money almost instantaneously and it's a really good thing to do it's really quick i know it can be a bit annoying with all the daily things you probably have planned out but it's a small investment for a decent chunk of money it's one of the things that even when i'm not actively playing bdo i try to keep going and it keeps me you know progressing forward so 
That's why passive income and AFK income is really important. There are days that I don't feel like grinding, so these really pick up the slack for me and I always make progress. So work around your schedule. That's the most important thing with these passive incomes, but you know, farming is definitely a great choice to have for any type of player. All right, guys, next up is Imperial Cooking. You guys heard me talk about this so many times in many different videos and on stream. You can check those out for more detailed information about how to do Imperial Cooking. But in this video, I want to show you guys Valia N's Imperial Cooking Calculator, which is really useful. So come to ValiaN.com, go to Imperial, select your region, that is PC North America, and over here, select Cooking. Or if you're doing Alchemy, you can use Alchemy. Then for Mastery, enter your number. For CP, you can enter your CP over here. Profession, select what cooking level you are. I'm at Guru, so we're selecting Guru. And put some number here so it weeds out all the zero quantity items. And now you have this updated list down below. So in this list, what it shows is the type of box, the name of the meal, the total amount of materials you need to turn in in one day, the profit per box, the profit for all your turn-ins combined, the quantity of the item on the marketplace, and the average price that it's using to calculate these values. So these are actively updated as you can see here, and it's really useful to see what items you need to buy in order to make your boxes and how much money you can expect from them. So one of the biggest issues I had with Imperial Cooking is some days I would miss it, even though it's as simple as buying the meals off the marketplace and making an easy 60 mil. But my issue was some days I was too lazy to do the cooking. So now I got into the habit of doing a week's worth of Imperial Cooking, just storing them in the storage place and just turning them in. So remember that this quantity is combined with all the other players, but it's not combined through all the regions. So different towns will have a different number or different amount that we can turn in to Together. Using Heidel is very competitive. There's a lot of people who sit around in Heidel, so it's really difficult to get your turn-ins done there. So you can go to Altanova or Grana or a different town and have an easier time turning them in. So just keep that in mind. And when you turn in, you want to maximize your mastery level, your cooking mastery, because that really helps in uh, increasing your profit. So we're going to put on all our mastery here. We're going to use Seafood Cron Meal for a little bit more mastery. And you can see in the mastery window here, that on the bottom it shows that i get an extra 36.5 percent profit by using mastery gear so even if it's some bootleg mastery gear like mine make sure you have it equipped when you turn in so as you guys saw on the calculator i make about 60 mil a day i like to buy a huge bulk of items to turn into guru cooking boxes when they're at low prices and just save them up even if it's one to two weeks worth of material that's fine because it's so important for me to get that consistent cash and not be lazy to go make them into boxes every day so doing it at bulk for like an hour a week really helps me out and I do it while I'm working on the side so I'm AFK anyway so it really helps out to plan ahead and that consistent income is so good 60 mil a day adds up really quick that's 1.8 bill per month right so make sure you pay attention to your AFK incomes and your passive incomes because they add up over time obviously when I'm actively grinding I make like 300 mil an hour but I'm not always going to be able to grind so Always having this passive income on the side really helps out in the long run. And hey, a net positive is a net positive. Even though it's only 60 mil, for a beginner player, that's actually a quite a decent amount of money, right? So with professional cooking, you can expect even around 30 mil a day. Once you get Guru, it starts going up. Once you cook your own meals, it gets even higher. So as you guys saw, my mastery gear was pretty basic. Getting my mastery is actually uh, pretty easy. Let's even say you have like 600 mastery and you're a newer player and you only have about 200 CP and you're at professional cooking. Let's see how much you can get from pickled wedgies. Even if you were to buy the pickled wedgies, you can make a really sizable amount of cash for a new player. Getting professional cooking, it only takes like an hour. It's really easy to do. Getting this passive income set up, it might be overwhelming in the beginning, but once you learn it, it's such a simple task and you can plan ahead. Making pickled wedgies is really easy. You can buy the vinegar, you can make it, you can buy the items for the remainder of the pickled veggies through the NPC in Calfion. It's at uh, Milano Bellucci down here in this building north of the stable keeper in Calfion. So it's really easy to do guys. Make sure you do it. It adds up over time and it's free money. Next up is the absolute passive income in this game that is Worker Empire. These workers are working real hard for you. 
even when you're AFK, when you're actively playing, whatever. So make sure you start working on building up your worker empire from the very beginning because it takes a lot of time to get it to a good state. Initially, as soon as you get started in the game, you want to focus on getting all goblins like skilled goblins, professional goblins. They're pretty easy to roll for. But in the end game, you want to start focusing on getting a lot of artisan goblins. I still have a long way to go, as you can see here, but it's slowly shaping up. Now, if you're someone who actually leaves the house, unlike me, and you don't have the ability to feed your workers as frequently you can have like an entire setup of human workers which uh, will last a lot longer but be sure to check out my worker empire guide it is still valid the only difference since i've released it is that we have odraxia which i haven't even visited in my game because i really don't care about it but there are some nodes that you can pick up like these potato this chicken nodes those are actually kind of useful so definitely go pick those up if you can but otherwise my Worker Empire guide is still 100% valid, be sure to check it out. The reason the Worker Empire is so important is, is because there are some items that you can't get from gathering. For example, Nutmeg is really vital for cooks, and the only reliable way to get Nutmeg is either putting up pre-orders or getting it from your workers. And naturally, that means Nutmeg is usually in high demand on the marketplace. Let's check it out on North America here. So we got a decent sizable amount of Nutmeg over here, that's good for us but other regions like Mina are usually on pre-order. So this is really useful to have if you're a cook and if you're a beginner player, having those uh, potato nodes, those chicken nodes, really help out to get that initial material that you can power level cooking with. Also things like the wheat over here. So starting off, you'd want to follow my worker empire guide, but after you're a more advanced player, you want to focus on what you actually use those items for. You can directly sell these items to the marketplace and make a decent amount of money, I make on an average like 30 to 40 mil a day. I haven't really calculated it in a while and I've gotten a lot more artisan goblins since I last checked it out, but it's really good cash. So make sure you do pay attention to this and you work on it. It is a long process to roll for those artisan workers to promote the workers every day. Uh, you can promote one worker for free uh, unless you want to pay to win it, but otherwise, you know, it's still good to do even if you're not pay to winning it because that is a big money sink. But this will add up over time. No matter what you're doing in the game, it's always going to be ticking. All you have to do is put some food in your family inventory over here and just click over here, uh, feed them and you're good to go. Finally, I want to talk about workshops. So passive income from workshops can be really nice, but in order to sustain them, you would probably want to be actively gathering. There are some workshops, for example, the ship part workshop where you can make like Ethereum gear and stuff and sell it. Um, in order to do this, you'll want that material as well as you want to do the daily here from Velocity, I believe. Yep, right here. So if you have a character here, it only takes a couple minutes to do it. So you can go down that route. But the more common route nowadays, thanks to Agent Russ's videos about this, is the Advanced Cooking Utensil Workshop. So for me, I had two workshops running here in Glish back when I was doing a lot of life skilling. I was making about 90 mil a day profit from doing this. So the reason why I say 90 mil a day in profit was because I was actually going and gathering a lot of the materials, all the logs I chopped down myself and all the rough stone for the polished stone I went and gathered myself. So if you were to buy these materials, then the profit would be a bit less, but it's still really good income. And if you're someone who's actually life skilling, this is a common thing to do because you have your own supply of advanced cooking utensils. Me, I haven't even sold the ones I have. I got, you know, close to 500 saved up in total. So it's something that you have to do if you're really into gathering and life skilling in general. But even if you're not, and if you can only do it like maybe one to two hours of gathering a day, it's a way to get some extra income going, even though you're not spending six to seven hours a day playing the game. So while there is active gathering involved to keep those workshops going, I still consider it as passive because those workshops are running even when you're doing something else. But like I said, there are different workshops. I'm not gonna point out all of them just because I don't wanna ruin any methods for something people are already doing. So just keep an eye out and explore the game. There are other workshops which are lucrative, but make sure you do what works for you. Me, I couldn't keep those workshops running too long because even gathering for two to three hours a day was a bit difficult for me. So at some point I'm like, it's enough of the life skilling. I'm going to go back to grinding. That's uh, more down my alley of expertise and I can sustain that a lot better. So eventually I did stop those workshops and they're not working right now, but there are some people who have like a bunch of these workshops and they're making close to a billion a day 
and profit from you know the gathering the workshops and everything combined all the passive incomes and all that so once you get to the high-end life skilling you can even make two to three bill a day pretty easily but this is for us basic players <laughs> so you know do what you can do make sure you go according to your schedule and you don't want to get burnt out doing this so setting up these passive incomes are designed to help you and support your income in general they're not the main way for you to make money now i know some players do uh, make most of their income through workshops but listen you got to play the game how it works for you because you can't compare yourself to every other player who has a different variety of experience in the game this game has a lot of depth in almost everything that it offers so that's one of the great things about bdo you got to tailor your daily routine to a way that it works for you and it's sustainable for you make sure you just explore and try new things and see what you can do and what you can sustain and go by that i hope you found this passive income section helpful now we're going to talk about the advanced methods of making money in bdo basically the big bucks so making profit at a large scale in BDO takes a lot of time investment to get your account to that stage. But instead of just developing your account, there are other ways you can make big money, but it's a lot more difficult and it's gated to people who have a lot of capital to burn. This section of the video isn't exactly tailored to show you exactly how to do it because I myself haven't gotten to the stage where I'm making this kind of money or even employing these methods. This is mostly just to inform you and just give you a little bit of insight on how it's done and to show you what's possible in the future. I don't like preaching about things that I personally haven't tried myself. So here's your disclaimer. <laughs> so there are three methods that I want to talk about in this section. The first is going to be enhancing for profit. Now, gambling is something that we all are aware of, especially here in BDO. And it's something that is quite straightforward. Tap it. If you profit, great. Otherwise, you lose but there are some smart ways to go about it so enhancing for profit isn't just about the end product it's about how much profit you're making overall with all the items combined that you spent into getting the enhanced product so for example if you are enhancing boss armors it's not just about selling that boss armor for profit whether at tet or pen but spending as least amount of money as possible on the materials so for example blackstones you want to buy all of the materials that you use in enhancing, whether it's uh, memory fragments, whether it's hards and sharps, you want to buy them at the cheapest possible price. So for example, for memory fragments, the prices have been fluctuating a lot. Right now, there's been recent releases of classes and every time a new class comes out, especially when the awakening drops, prices skyrocket for memory fragments. So you want to buy memory fragments at the lowest possible. And if you're someone who has a lot of capital, then you can actually buy tens of thousands of these in stockpile. And in the long run, it pays off. Same thing with hards and sharps. You want to buy them at the cheapest price possible. So if you're enhancing for profit, you're not going to be buying hards and sharps for two mil a piece. You're going to buy them for about 1.5 mil a piece. So same thing goes for blackstones and any material you're using for enhancing. The most important thing for enhancing for profit is you're going to be making money in the long run. It's not just about hitting those high ticket items right off the bat because let's face it, the chance of hitting those are pretty low. Eventually you will hit them. And when you do, you want to maximize the amount of profit by reducing the amount of spending because you're getting those fail stacks you're burning fail stacks to make that item you're also repairing that item so in every step of that journey you want to spend as least amount of money as possible so for those of the people who are enhancing for profit it's not just that they're tapping those items and constantly tapping them they have a whole system of lower enhancement items you have set up for building those fail stacks but also you're spending as least amount of money as possible to maximize the profit all in all gambling is gambling i'm not gonna really encourage it but for those of the end game players who have the capital to sustain it i'm not talking like 10 bill i'm talking about you know 50 bill 100 bill <laughs> so you can start off small you can start off uh enhancing with some smaller items and work your way up but it is a risk there's always a chance that you will fail everything for 500 taps and you lose everything so do it smart don't go all in don't do the pen roulettes for that profit but you know this is just an insight into how it's done next is playing the market you probably heard about this and it's pretty straightforward if you look at it at first so let's pick an item like let's go into enhancing let's see the concentrated magical black gem prices 
So at one point they were at the lowest of low of 6.35 mil each and they peaked at 8.6 mil each. So if you were to buy a big supply of them at 6.35 and wait until they were 8.6 and sold them, you would have made profit even with the market tax. But the thing is, you might have spent over 30 bill in getting 5,000 of these concentrated gems and you only made like about 4.8 to 5 bill in profit. Is that worth it to wait almost two months for that? Um, not really. You tied up 30 bill for just about, you know, 4.5 to 5 bill in profit. That's over two months. That's really not that much money if you think about it. But if you're someone who's not playing the game and all you do is look at the market, hey, definitely profit, right? But the real money comes in when you're combining it with life skills as well. Like we're just going to use this for an example. I'm going to pick cheese gratin for a balanced meal, right? If you're not able to make your own cheese gratin, you're bottlenecked at some materials and whatnot, that's fine. Let's say you're just going to buy the base materials and cook the meal yourself. Let's say you have a high mastery and you can profit from cooking. So if you're at a high mastery and then you're buying your own meals, you're not going to buy it at the current price. It's all the way up here. You're going to wait to buy it at this price at 23K or so, and you're going to buy a big bulk of it and then you're going to cook it all. If you were to save that two to three K on each cheese gratin that adds up over time and that's a significant percent you're saving on the overall cost of the meal and because you have a high mastery you can make a lot of profit by making those meals or turning them into uh, guru boxes and imperial cooking overall the amount of money you're saving from playing the market by waiting for when the price is low and then buying a big bulk of it and stockpiling it you're gonna make a lot more money than buying it outright now this is just one example there are many different recipes in the game which can follow this method and to increase your profit overall. And that's what playing the market is all about. Sometimes you might be buying out everything to drive the prices up or lower. Uh, those are all manipulations that I can't really get into because I'm not experienced in it, but this is basically the gist of it. This was just an example, but there are many items that you might be trying to make for life skilling and to try to profit off of. But you have to keep in mind, these prices will always be fluctuating. Most prices do not stay stable unless they're at the peak and it's a very high demand item. So by buying it at the lowest price, you're able to save like 20% on the price of how much you're spending to make that item, right? Overall, that adds up to your profit and that really benefits you. Now, for an advanced player, multiply this by 100,000 items, 200,000 items cooked, and it greatly increases the amount of money you're making. 20% when you're selling 100,000 meals, that's huge. Anyway, guys, that's a scuffed explanation on how to utilize the market for the big money. Personally, I'm not there yet, so I don't want to preach too much into it. But the last thing is life skill supremacy. That means you are a proper life skiller with a really high mastery. For example, let's say you had 2K mastery gathering, you had that G28 gathering, you have G50 cooking, and you're out maintaining about you know six to eight of those uh, tool workshops running 24 7 you're able to gather for four to six hours a day you do all your lumber you do your pilgrims you do all your meat and you're able to supply your own uh, cooking material or you buy it you get it from your worker node empire all that combined you do all the cooking all the gathering you got passive income coming from your workshops your farms your imperial cooking you're actively cooking you're gathering all of that combined how much money can you make in the upper echelon of life skillers there are people who make over three bill a day doing all those combined some even more if they're very market savvy so it might seem a bit far-fetched right now but once you have that kind of gear it is definitely possible i mean definitely from a grinder's perspective if you have that 650 to 700 gear score super end game you can crush hadoom and grind for 10 hours a day and make that same kind of money like three bill plus but that takes a lot more effort it's definitely rough on my hands to even try to attempt grinding for four hours a day let alone that much so i really wanted to just give you guys an idea of how it all comes together at the end of the game like once you're at that final stage of like that high high mastery and the only next best thing you can do is go for those pen accessories that's when the real money starts coming in once you have that 2k mastery gathering whether you're gathering or you're cooking everything starts just making so much more money so when you combine everything together it's not just that you're gathering and you're selling what you get you're using it for other things like cooking you're using it for running your workshops when you combine everything together when all the systems are working together in a cohesive manner that's when you make the real money anyway guys this last section was just mostly me rambling i just wanted to give you a bit of insight on 
uh, where you can see yourself at the end of the game when you're at the final stages of your gear, whether it's grinding, whether it's for life skills, it's a complete different game from what a beginner player would see. So with that, we'll conclude the final section of this guide. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I really hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below or hit me up on my Discord channel. A lot of people are there who are willing to help you guys and answer some questions. Please do like, comment and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. All of that analytics really helps me out. And of course, the best way to support me is to share my video on Discord and with your friends. Please do check me out at twitch.tv slash I'm Pansy. I try to stream three days a week, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And I talk about all sorts of things, not just BDO, but MMOs in general. So be sure to come by and hang out sometime. That being said, I hope you really did find this helpful and this gave you a sense of direction on where to go in terms of making money. This isn't all encompassing. There's plenty of other methods out there that I haven't covered, but it's just a starting point. So anyway, you guys have a good one and I'll catch you guys next time.